originates from the south of the United States where African Americans were, were held as slaves. This genre of music was largely developed in the south by those people as a means of communication with each other. Where they came from, they were coming from all different tribes that did not speak a common language and so this genre of music was one of their ways of communicating with each other. And it was developed to express those feelings of oppression and hardship, but also to give a sense of optimism during their hard times. And so it's in that spirit that we should learn and study the blues. Now, before you get started in learning to play the blues, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is to listen to masters who have written music in the language of the blues. So, you can learn the blues in a major key or you can learn it in a minor key. If you're learning the blues in a major key, I would recommend Sea Jam Blues by Duke Ellington, Sunny Moon for Two by Sonny Rollins, or Freddie Freeloader by Miles Davis. If you are learning the blues in a minor key, some, some well-known recordings are Equinox by John Coltrane, Mr. PC by John Coltrane, Burke's Works by Dizzy Gillespie, or the Spider-Man theme are all in the key of the minor blues. So depending on which blues you're starting to learn, you can access any of those recordings, and I will post links for them in the description of this video. Now, as we listen, it helps us to understand the, the structure of the blues, how the music itself is organized. So to help you with that, I have also included in the description of this video uh, a cheat sheet that, that gives some different numbers in Roman numerals. And you'll see that I've laid the form out. It's a 12 bar form and you'll see that I've laid it out in three lines of four bars each. And that's how the blues is structured in the major and minor key. You'll also see that, like I mentioned, there are Roman numerals. And those Roman numerals are helpful in understanding how the chords progress from one to the next. So I'd like to now talk about some of the theoretical progressions that you see in the blues. So first we start with a one, which represents the tonic or the home chord. We progress to a four and then back to one. In theoretical terms, we call this a plagal cadence. It's a cadence that you often hear in, in church. Its nickname is the Amen cadence to give that sense of suspension. And then in this copy of the blues that I've included, there is one of the most popular chord progressions that we find in jazz language and that is the two five one progression and you will see that in essentially any type of jazz standard that you that you learn so it's a very good chord progression to become familiar with what i'd like to do now in this video is i'd like for you to to sing with me the chord progression as you see it on the sheet that i have provided i'm going to put a backing track on and together, we are going to practice singing the chord progression using the Roman numerals provided on the Blues Basic Sheet. Again, descriptions in the video.
times as you need to to really become familiar with the sounds. The more you will sing, the more the sounds will become internal to you and the better they will translate to your actual instrument. So now, we, now that we're familiar with how the chords progress from one to the next in the, in the chords of the blues, we're going to now start translating this to our instrument. So you'll also see that I've included in the description of this video a major scale or a minor scale blues cheat sheet. And what that will do is it gives you the notes of all the scales that are possible for you to play in the major or the minor blues. And so with that, depending on whether you pick the major or the minor blues, you'll see that I've written numbers underneath each of the notes of the scale and those numbers are going to correlate with the Roman numerals that you find on the blues progression sheet. So for an example, I'm going to be demonstrating in the key of C minor. And so if you're a tenor sax player, clarinet player, or trumpet player, B flat instrument, we're gonna be looking at the D minor scale. If you're an alto sax player or a barry sax player, we're going to be looking at the A minor scale. Everyone else in concert pitch, we're going to be looking at your C minor scale. Again, cheat sheet in the description of this video. You're going to see that the first note of that scale is going to be the concert C. The next chord in the progression goes to the four chord. And so we're going to go to the fourth note of that scale which in concerts pitch is going to be the F. And we'll figure that out all the way through. So take a minute, pause the video if you need to, figure out all the notes as they translate to your instrument. So I'm going to play this in the key of C minor. I'd like for you to play this with me, but depending on what kind of blues you may be learning in any other key, the same concepts are going to apply to any key or, or genre of blues that you are playing. So I'm going to get my metronome out. I'm going to set it to beats two and four, which is another way that you can practice these roots. And let's play through this progression together. All right, let's go. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> together, I would encourage you to play it in as many keys as you can. The more keys you can play this progression in, the better off you're going to be in understanding how to really play the blues. So for example, we played it right now in the key of C minor. You might decide to play it in the key of B flat major or A flat minor. Pick as many keys as you can and learn this progression. Use that cheat sheet if you need, but the ultimate goal is for you to play these by memory. There are backing tracks everywhere on YouTube if that's how you prefer to practice, or you can just set your metronome. When you've mastered this concept, you'll be ready for my next video, which shows you some tips and tricks to improve your improv on this concept by adding some melodic embellishments and rhythmic interest. So we'll dive into that in the next video. For right now, happy shedding, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.